Um, and to just talk, talk about fresh expressions, uh, me and Matt, when we were talking about this, he talked about how y'all um, call it new spaces, sometimes call it micro church. I just call it fresh expression so much that I didn't, uh, I didn't think I could translate it over. Uh, my brain would just uh, say fresh expression. So I'm just going to call it fresh expressions tonight. And, uh, just know that that's the same thing we're talking about is uh, uh, these new forms towards people that wouldn't come to church on Sunday mornings. Um, so I'm going to just talk a bit about it tonight. I'm going to uh, introduce kind of um, why fresh expressions are needed, how they are often started, share some stories, um, share some uh, common uh, examples, fresh expressions, all that stuff. Um, and we'll have some, some time for conversation and uh, you can put questions in the chat box too as things are happening. Um, and we'll, yeah, we'll just have, have a good time for the next hour and um, hopefully you'll walk away with a, a good picture of what fresh expressions are and how they get started. Um, and hopefully there'll be something in here that's helpful for y'all. Um, so the first question, uh, I just got like totally dropped and came back. <laughs> y'all there? Yeah, we can see you now. Wow. That was weird. It just like totally logged out and logged back in. Okay. Hopefully that won't happen again. Let me change my internet connection just in case. So I'm going to freeze for one second. All right. I moved over to the 5G. Hopefully that won't happen again. Sorry. <laughs> The um, Owens internet issues somehow got transferred to me. <laughs> All right, cool. So uh, definition of, of a fresh expression. So fresh expressions is a movement that started in the UK in 2004. Um, and it was a movement of new forms of church. And uh, it started as gatherings that connected with people um, who weren't a part of any other church, um, but came to these new forms of church. And so um, fresh expressions, there's a kind of formal definition that I can, uh, I'll share my screen and you can see it. Um, so it's a, it's a new form of church for those not connected to any church. Um, so they often meet in places and with folks, um, who they might meet in places out, out in the public, um, and put in non-traditional places and they might meet in non-traditional ways. And, and we'll kind of get into more of what um, fresh expressions look like. Um, but so the reason why fresh expressions has uh, really emerged as a, a huge part of the church in England, um, and so it emerged out of the Anglican and the uh, British Methodist Church over there, and now is catching on really quickly in the United States, um, is because of uh, the rapid decline of, of church attendance. And, and something that's interesting about um, American statistics is we see that people are leaving the church really quickly. So like every year around 700,000 people leave um, traditional forms of church in the United States. Um, and yet experiences with, um, with like mystical experiences have actually increased among the U.S. population. So in 1962, um, 22% people said they had a, a personal encounter with God. And, and in 2009, almost ha half of Americans said they did. So I, I think something that's kind of different from the U.S. than the U.K. is less, it's less about secularization or kind of um, not believing in God. And it's more about deinstitutionalization or detraditionalization, like leaving the formalized ver versions of religion. Um, so we end up having a lot of people in the United States that are spiritual, but not religious. Um, so something we might call like post-Christian um, or, or uh, and the, the whole idea around it, we, we call post-Christendom. Um, so the, the kind of the world that many of us knew um, or some of y'all started out in ministry in or some of y'all grew up in, uh, where church was kind of the central part of life, where like you could ask someone what church you go to, not like, do you go to church? Like that reality is quickly, quickly changed 
over the past 20, 30 years. Um, and the church has not really kind of known what to do um, and, or how to react to that. So that kind of sets the stage um, for why we need these new spaces, these micro churches, these fresh expressions, uh, because we have this group of people in our communities. Um, some statistics I've seen, it's around 40 to 60 percent of people who just will never come to a traditional form of church, um, whether they have had a bad experience or they just uh, feel like the church is uh, something that they just wouldn't go to. There's just this huge percentage of people in our communities that wouldn't go to a tr traditional form of church, but they might come to a new form of church. So they might come to a, uh, a form of church that meets at a pub or a running group that has a opportunity to pray at the beginning and uh, or a, a hiking group that reflects on scripture while you hike. That There's this group of people in our communities that no matter how um, good the, the music is, no matter how nice the uh, the hair of the worship leader is, or how good the um, the preacher is, how good the coffee is, they're still not coming. And so that's what Fresh Expressions, that's what New Space is about, um, is about connecting um, with folks that aren't going to come on Sunday mornings and finding out how we can be the church with them. Um, and, and what's cool about uh, Fresh Expressions is that, so so I, I, I led, as, as Matt said, um, I currently am the Associate Director of Church Development for the Western North Carolina Conference. Um, and I've been doing that a role full-time for the past two years. But before that, I led a, a network of fresh expressions in Boone, North Carolina, which is a, a college town in the mountains in Western North Carolina. And, um, and when, when I was leading that network of fresh expressions, I, or right before that, I was the missions director and our senior pastor asked if I would be interested in starting a campus of Boone UMC in the downtown area of Boone. And as I looked around um, Boone, I noticed uh, that there's a lot of really great churches, right? There was like uh, high church, high steeple churches with the high liturgy. There was really cool um, modern worship churches. There was kind of everything in between. And so I just felt like there was something uh, that if we were going to reach a, a new group of people, a group of people that wasn't already connected to one of those churches, we'd have to do something pretty differently. And so we started King Street Church, our first group, um, was just a little group of, of it was about a dozen of us. And we ended up meeting at the Boone Saloon um, and talking about scripture um, while we sat together on Sunday nights. Um, and so what's cool about Fresh Expressions is that it's a way for your church to reach out to folks that you haven't been able to connect with before. And so Boone UMC um, saw King Street Church as a part of Boone UMC because we were a campus, we were, we were a part of the wider church. And so we Boone UMC saw it as an opportunity, saw it as a way of, um, of including people into our church family that we never would have been able to include before. Um, and so that was, um, it, it's, it, and we call that the, the blended ecology in fresh expressions. Um, so it's this, this idea that um, new forms of church and traditional forms of church aren't in competition with one another, um, but actually work together really well and they reach different people. Um, and so when we talk about fresh expressions or new spaces, we're not suggesting that we're going to um, replace traditional forms of church because we need traditional forms of church. Um, traditional forms of church, like like I I, I love worshiping uh, on Sunday mornings with my family, where my daughter gets to encounter folks, uh, gets to run up to her elderly friend and give them a hug. Like like there's nothing better than singing hymns together and and like being connected to the ancient liturgy that we've carried on for hundreds and hundreds of years. Like the traditional church is important and we need to continue to pour our resources and our energy into making as, as, uh, as strong as possible. But we just have to recognize that not everyone will be able to connect with that new, that traditional form of church. And so we also, in addition to traditional forms of church need new forms of church. Um, and they have the ability to reach people that we wouldn't be able to reach if we, only focused on our existing forms of church. 
So we call that the, the blended ecology. Um, and what's cool about fresh expressions is that we, especially in the United Methodist Church, so far what, how it's worked is that we anchor them um, to a traditional form of church. So King Street Church was anchored to Boone UMC um, and all of the fresh expressions that I'll share um, tonight are, um, are anchored into um, fresh expressions or into to traditional forms of church. I'm gonna look at this uh, comment real quick. Um, Anthony says, can you talk about the people that you started with? Um, yeah, so as King Street Church was starting, um, we, me and a, a friend that kind of were the ones that got everything started, we started just approaching our friends to invite them to a potluck. And we ended up connecting with people that um, were interested in talking about faith, but not interested in going to church. Um, so we had a few kind of um, to group, I mean, we're, we're in North Carolina, so most uh, folks had some experience with church at some point in their lives. Um, but a lot of them had maybe gone once or twice when they were kids. Some of them um, had gone more, um, but it was mostly younger folks and folks that had been become disconnected from church for several years, um, if not like really long periods of time. Um, so uh, one of the, um, and, and so one of the, my favorite resources that uh, Fresh Expressions has has brought about is called the Fresh Expression Journey. I'm going to share my screen for a little while here, um, so I can uh, show you all some slides here. Catch up. Um, so let me back up one second. Um, Bishop Graham Cray at one of the Fresh Expressions conferences uh, said this, this quote here, and, and y'all can read it, but basically that what if um, the image of Jesus and the community around him um, wasn't just an image of Jesus training disciples to start churches later, but what if that was an image of church itself? So what if the, the nomadic community of uh, Jesus that moving through the Judean countryside is, is an ecclesiology, is a, a, a way of being church. And so with that image of church, you have uh, the committed, the extra committed kind of at the center of it, but you also have people kind of popping in um, and, and, and questioning what they hear and, and popping out. And, and there's just this kind of flowing um, church that, that's able to move throughout um, the countryside. So Fresh Expressions really leans um, heavily on that. Um, and I was saying that one of my favorite resources that emerged out of the Fresh Expressions movement in the UK um, is something called the Fresh Expressions Journey. And it's the, the six stages that most Fresh Expressions go through. Um, and so this is kind of where a Fresh Expression will differentiate from a traditional kind of church plant. Um, so we're creating a new faith community, but we're doing it in a gradual process. So where a traditional church plant might have like a launch Sunday um, where it kind of starts with a worship service, right? Um, um, a fresh expression goes through a, a longer process of listening, of building relationships, building a social community that can then become a spiritual community and then later become a, a church. Um, and so I'm going to go through these stages because um, I, I think this is, the most practical resource within Fresh Expressions. I think it has a lot to teach all of us, whether we're starting a, a new space, whether we're um, starting a new ministry. I think that the Fresh Expressions journey is a really powerful resource. Um, and, and so I'm going to go through these stages um, uh, for a little while and just share about each one um, and um, share some stories and, and then we'll keep going from there. But the first stage of the Fresh Expressions journey. So Fresh Expressions start with a process of listening. Um, they, they start with a process of listening to our community, listening to um, our own calling that, that we're discerning, listening to God, praying, um, spending time in prayer, asking God um, who we might um, reach out to, who we might begin to connect with. Uh, so Fresh Expressions um, take time with this this stage. So you, you might have a, uh, a, you might be doing some prayer walks where you um, walk around a neighborhood, walk around a downtown area of your community, um, drive around a rural community, um, trying to just 
learn some more about your community. You might do some, some community studying through something like Mission Insight or um, do some informal interviews with people in your community that, that aren't going to church. Find out what their interests are. Find out why they don't go to church. Just this process of listening and trying to understand your community in a deeper way. And, and, you know, some of y'all have lived in your communities your whole lives and you're like, there's nothing new I can learn about um, my community. But I think when we uh, enter into that process with intentionality um, and, and push ourselves to talk to new people, to move beyond our comfort zones, the, there's new things to learn. Um, we've got a, a fresh expression in Western North Carolina that knocked on 1500 doors. Uh, and I know that like, how to freak out Methodists talk about knocking on doors, right? Um, but uh, they knocked on 1500 doors and just asked how they could pray for the people that uh, that lived in that house, um, asked them a few other questions about the community, and wrote down their answers. Um, and what they discovered was there was a ton of people in their community um, who had children that were struggling with addiction. And then they, they also discovered there's a ton of folks who were uh, mourning the loss of a loved one. And so out of that, they had two really solid ideas of a fresh expression that they could, they could start. So that's that listening process. And, and, and out of, uh, here's another example. Um, second to the left is Amani. And she um, was a recent graduate of uh, UNC Greensboro, and she studied public health. And when she moved back home after college uh, to Hickory, her family had inherited the house of their um, her grandparents, and it was in a downtown area of Hickory um, where there are some really high rates of preventable diseases. And so she had this idea um, kind of out of her learning, out of her passions of public health to start a wellness house out of that um, house. And so she started, um, she was, that process of listening for her was getting to know that community, but also seeing um, how her passions and the community's um, needs kind of met in the middle. Um, and so for her, uh, she started this wellness house where they ended up having uh, conversations around health uh, and, and also spiritual conversations. The next stage of the Fresh Expressions journey is loving people. Uh, it's building relationships. It's finding ways to further invest in the people that we already know, but also pushing ourselves uh, to get to know new people. Um, and, and this uh, stage is, it's all about kind of getting out of our comfort zones of starting to um, move into different spaces to spend our time in, in um, third places, which are places where people spend their time that's not um, home or work. Uh, so you might start looking in your community for um, coffee shops or for parks or dog parks um, or hiking trails, um, all kinds of things like that. Um, so this is a, a stage where we're, we're trying to, to build relationships, invest in people, um, get to know new people. Um, I, I think that this stage is, is important, but it also, it just makes a lot of sense in our current context in the U.S. Um, Cigna does a, a loneliness study every year. And in 2019, 51% uh, of Americans were lonely. Um, and in 2018, uh, or no, 2019 it was, it was 51%. Then in 2020, their, their study um, was 61%. And then just imagine kind of what it was. That, that, that was pre-pandemic that that study came out. So imagine what, what that was um, post-pandemic or, or during the pandemic. And so loneliness is just by definition is a, a lack of meaningful connections. And so when we focus on building meaningful connections, um, it's, it's a basis um, that can connect with a lot of people in our communities. There's a lot of lonely people that are looking for belonging, that are looking um, for meaningful relationships. And I think theologically, it makes a lot of sense. Like um, we, are, we worship a Trinitarian God who uh, is in relationship. The Trinity is, is, is perfect relationship. And then in, in John 15, um, Jesus in Jesus's prayer, we see that like that God, that that the Trinitarian God then invites us into that relationship too, um, and so it just makes a lot of sense to focus um, when we start a new faith community to focus on relationships because that's 
that's what we were created out of. That's who we were created to be, is to be in relationship. Um, and, and I think that friendship, that relationship is really the, the building block of church. So it's, it, it's an important stage, important part of the process. Um, so then the, the third stage is, is building community. So uh, again, kind of going back to that, differentiating this from a, a traditional church plant, um, when we build relationships with people out in the community, we're, we're not directly inviting them to a spiritual community yet um, in a fresh expression. And it, sometimes we might, but, but for a lot of fresh expressions, they start with a social community, uh, a social gathering where um, it's gathering around an activity, it's gathering around a shared interest. Um, so you might have a, a running group or you might have a hiking group. Um, you might have a group of friends that goes to the pub um, and has a drink and talks about life. Um, you might have um, just a, a single mom's group that um, there's a, a church members that can watch the kids while the single moms can de-stress for a little while. This finding ways to, to build community, to bring people together um, and to, to build, build connections. Uh, I love Elaine Heath's uh, uh, quote here where that, that uh, Christian community is actually the, the best way, one of the best ways to preach the gospel, to evangelize, that, that when someone experiences Christian community, um, it, it draws people in. There's something unique about it. There's something um, powerful about it. Um, and so, yeah, out of, out of this community, then, um, we begin to look for opportunities to explore discipleship. And, and I'm going to go through some more examples of how Fresh Expressions went through this um, at the after I, I go through each stage. But um, so as Fresh Express, as a social community is being built, as it's growing, as there's um, you're you're building relationships within that group, um, you start to look for opportunities to uh, introduce discipleship, to to invite people into it, um, and and what's tricky here is to to do it in a way that's not um, bait and switch, or um, that's not dishonest or manipulative, and so there's several ways that that happens. All of them are about invitation or letting or letting people opt in to a discipleship um, opportunity. But so you might have um, a social group that meets um, once a week or every other week um, and goes for a run or something, and then out of those out of that group of people that you've connected with. Then you have this pool of people that you can invite to another group um, that might have an element of discipleship. Hey, um, we're going to, uh, I know Thursday mornings we're, we're doing our run. On Tuesday morning, if anybody would like to, to eat breakfast and, and talk about scripture, we're going to be doing that. Um, and, and so some of those people might come over. Um, some fresh expressions start off with a spiritual element um, at, the, at the very beginning. Um, and then some fresh expressions um, it might happen in, in an even slower process. So you might have that running group and you have one person that asks you about your faith and you start having coffee with that person talking about faith and slowly add on more. Um, another way uh, that uh, some fresh expressions will do it is to start both at once. So um, this is, uh, Owen just said he went to Maggie Valley. This is actually a, a fresh expression of Maggie Valley United Methodist in um, Western North Carolina. And this is, uh, it's called the Smoky Mountain Hiking Community. And the way they do their fresh expression is they have a, a social hike once a month, one Saturday a month, and then they have a discipleship hike one uh, Saturday a month. And so on the um, social one, that's one that they invite all their friends to. And then they, uh, as they're kind of sharing their vision of what that community is about, they share that on this other hike, they also have one where they talk about faith. Um, and they'll um, open with a, a scripture at the trailhead um, and uh, pray together and then um, have spiritual conversation as they hike. So there's several ways of doing that um, transition. And then uh, so out of uh, once you start to explore discipleship with a group of people and you have folks that are coming to faith, um, they start looking for more elements of faith. So again, differentiating from the launch uh, Sunday with a, with a, a, a church plant, when you launch uh, your church plant, you usually have kind of every aspect of church planned, right? So you have your, um, your discipleship uh, 
plan. You have uh, a worship service where you have the sacraments. You have um, children's uh, discipleship, children's ministry. You have um, a, a plan for um, for giving, for uh, tithing, all these kinds of things, for, for pro proclaiming the word, for sermons and all that. So with Fresh Expressions, instead of having all those at the beginning, we slowly add those elements as the group um, grows together and as the group is ready for more aspects of church. Um, so to, to break my, uh, my monotony of, of talking for a minute, I'm going to stop sharing my screen for a second. Um, I'm curious what, what y'all see as kind of um, essential elements of church. What, what, do you, what do you guys think? You can throw it in the chat box or you can uh, unmute for a second. Prayer. Yeah. What else? Community, something in common, common mm -hmm. ground. Yep. Yeah, gathering, proclaiming the good news and offering. Yep. I feel like having a missional focus, whatever the mission is. Yeah. Yep. Mission, being kind of outwardly focused. Theology, yep. Worship, yep. Attending the means of grace. There's a good Methodist answer. <laughs> nice. Yep. Yeah, so in a, in a fresh expression then, um, we look to find how we can incorporate those. So you might have, like, like my group at, at the Boone Saloon, um, it, it started um, with spiritual conversation. We were able to incorporate scripture, um, but it took a while to then incorporate prayer. Um, and then we were meeting on Sunday night. And so uh, it was a, a it, the pub was open. We were right there. So it wasn't like there was an opportunity to have like worship music. So we had to explore, okay, how, how can this group add worship to what we're doing? Um, and so so for some fresh expressions, that means kind of broadening our, our definition of, of worship to beyond music um, or offering kind of uh, a, an alternative gathering every once in a while where, where music can be incorporated. Um, but yeah, so it's, it takes creativity. The, the offering that, that Owen mentioned, I think that's a really important part of being a disciple is, is, is tithing, is being generous with the money that, that God's given us. Um, but for people that are on the edge of church, like you start asking them to give towards, uh, give money to a church, like whew, they're out the door as fast as they can get out. Right. Um, and so we have to get creative with that. Um, one of the fresh expressions I'll show you in a second, um, they do an offering, um, but they do it for a mission. So they, they, uh, re they take an offering for drilling wells, um, and they drill wells with the, with the mon money that comes in. And that's a way of, of building that into um, their community, but also of not kind of scaring away people that would be um, turned off by giving towards a, a, a sermon or towards a, a church building or a, a pastor's salary. Um, so you find creative ways to incorporate um, these important aspects. Um, I've got the, uh, let me share my screen again. Got the, I'll be a good Methodist too, and pull up the uh, the Book of Discipline paragraphs here. These are just a couple of things I, 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 I see in the Book of Discipline when it talks about um, what makes something uh, church. So like sacraments, is another thing to, to find out how to be creative. If this is a lay-led fresh expression, which a lot of fresh expressions are. Um, this is where you would tap into that kind of anchor relationship with your um, traditional form of church. Um, and asking your pastor um, to visit on occasion to, to maybe lead the sacraments or, or uh, to lead a baptism um, if you have someone come to faith, all that kind of stuff. Um, so a example, uh, it's actually, this is the one that I was talking about that drills wells together. So this is a fresh expression that just celebrated their 15th year uh, of, uh, of existing. And they, it's called the River of Life. And it is a... Um, Fresh expression in 
Bryson City, North Carolina, which is, uh, and, and it, it gathers at the Nanahill Outdoor Center, which is this kind of paddling mecca um, in Western North Carolina where Olympic uh, canoers and kayakers um, are, are trained and, and raised. And it's this really cool little village for paddlers. And Wayner, the, the pastor, um, was actually an Olympic uh, canoer um, in the 96 Olympics. And he created this fresh expression. Um, he used to work at the Nanahill Outdoor Center as a, as a paddle guide. Um, and out of those relationships started this fresh expression. And now they've gotten to a point where it's, it's a full picture of church. Um, and, but it didn't happen right away, right? It took this process. But now um, they, they have proclamation of the word. They, have, um, uh, they gather together for worship. Um, and they tithe, um, even if it's towards mission still, um, but it, they have these elements of church that they've slowly added. Um, and it's this, it's a new, it's still a, a fresh way of being the church, but it's a full picture of church, what, um, what we'll call a mature expression of church. Um, and then the last stage of a fresh expressions journey is that one fresh expression can become multiple fresh expression. So they're doing it again. Um, so, uh, and, and you might start multiple at once too. Um, this is a, a, a example of a fresh expression in, in Virginia out of a, a pretty small um, Baptist church. And they started four fresh expressions at once. Um, and they've got their Sunday morning congregation. And then they've started a fresh expressions team, which is four people. Each person leads a fresh expression and each of them help um, with the other ones. And so they've started uh, four Fresh Expressions with King Street Church, where the Fresh Expression Network that I led, um, we got up to uh, five, six Fresh Expressions at once. We, we tried a whole bunch of other ones, too, that, that started and, and kind of fizzled out. Um, but so we had a gathering at Sunday night at the pub. Um, by the time I left, we had a gathering Sunday night at the pub. Um, we were at the homeless shelter on Monday night. Um, we were at the county jail on Wednesday mornings. Um, we had a morning uh, devotion at the coffee shop near the homeless shelter every weekday morning um, where we were reading scripture together. And then uh, we started a poetry group um, that last year that I was there. So you see that kind of once you start one fresh expression, it can uh, quickly become multiple. Um, yeah, Matt said, uh, uh, mentioned the book. Here's my, my uh, one shameless plug. Um, I, I like this fresh expression journey so much that I, I wrote a book about it. Um, and so I'll throw the, um, the pre-order link here in the chat box. Um, and then I, I promise I won't plug it anymore. Um, it actually releases on um, September 1st. So it's coming up very quickly and I'm real excited about it. I think it turned out really good. But there's a chapter on each of those stages in the book. Um, lots of stories, lots of tips on, on how to live out each of those. Um, so um, check that out. Um, so I wanted to just share a few stories, um, a few more stories of some fresh expressions, and then uh, we can have some time for, um, for questions. Um, so this is one of my favorite fresh expressions here. This is uh, Sorted, which is a, a youth skater church in Bradford, UK. And the guy in the upper left is... Uh, the leader of that, um, Andy, he, um, he is actually, he's a lay person um, and his wife is, is a clergy person, but he uh, started this fresh expression in his hometown when he came back after going to school. He noticed there's a lot of youth hanging around um, in the community, kind of up to no good, a lot of drug use among younger um, kids. And, and so he also saw there's a lot of kids skateboarding and he likes to skateboard. So he, he wondered, could he create a faith community out of skateboarding? Um, and so how they did this was they had a Friday night youth skate where they just had a bunch of food and a, a place for kids to skate. And they just met for a while um, just doing that. They had some adults there that were kind of supervising, making sure it was a safe environment. But beyond that, they weren't proselytizing or anything like that. Um, but then out of those relationships that they built, kids started saying, hey, why are you guys doing this? Um, or what, what's this about? And they're saying, well, like, we're interested in starting a faith community um, with, with y'all, if, if any of y'all are interested. But we're, we're Christians, like Andy would pray with folks if they wanted to pray. And out of that, there was a smaller group that was interested in talking about Jesus. 
And so on Wednesdays, they would have a Jesus story and skate. So what was cool was the Friday night big skate kept going on. It might have like 50, 60 kids at it. And then on, on Wednesday night, they'd have this Jesus story and skate. And it might only be a dozen kids or 15 kids, um, but it was 15 kids that weren't going to any other church. Um, and out of that, um, that a, a whole faith community uh, formed. So he, he actually tried to bring some of those kids to a Sunday morning worship and the kids were just bored out of their minds, had no idea what was going on. And they said, can we just do church together? And he was like, yeah, yeah, I guess we can. <laughs> um, and so out of that, this really beautiful church happened and, and they got all the way through the Fresh Expressions journey and got to um, actually starting another campus of sorted across the city. Um, and that what was really cool about when they started the second one was it was youth that had grown up um, into young adults who started the second one. Really cool, fresh expression. Um, here in uh, Western North Carolina, um, we've got um, we've got a uh, fresh expression um, at Snow Hill United Methodist, and they were active in. They had this uh, um, produce ministry where they grew produce and gave it away, and they would give it away at the local um, flea market. And um, at the flea market, they were building relationships with the flea market folks, and they found out that the property where the flea market was being hosted was, had gotten bought up. Um, it was going to be developed, and the flea market didn't have a place to go. And so they said, well, our church is like two miles down the road. we got a big parking lot. Um, why don't you all come over to our parking lot and have it, have it there? We won't even charge you for your booths um, to rent a space in, in the parking lot. So, so uh, folks in the flea market were like, Shh. Heck yeah, that sounds great. They got to keep a little bit more of their profits and the flea market carried on. And out of that, um, out of those relationships, they started a, a, a breakfast um, church, kind of like a dinner church in their fellowship hall for part of the time when the flea market was happening. Um, and so people could go in there and, um, and, and uh, experience church um, inside the fellowship hall and, and then go back outside. Uh, but it wasn't required you certainly didn't need to go in there but uh but folks did and folks that were a part of the, the flea market community final and weren't a part of church before that um had found found a faith community so pretty cool stuff um i'm going to talk a little bit more about dinner church here in a minute um but this is one uh this is a bilingual dinner church um in charlotte and um what's cool about this one was um it emerged out of two ministries that were already existing out of the out of the church they had a, a youth soccer league with um, hispanic youth and um and have a hispanic pastor who um who leads that and they built a ton of relationships through that and then they also had um community garden uh, ministry with their neighbors and so out of those two ministries they had this huge pool of people to invite to come to a dinner church when they started one um, and so they created this really cool bilingual dinner church where um, they would um, have the, the pastor of the, the church was bilingual. So you preach in um, English for a minute and then Spanish for a minute and go back and forth and then uh, would sing together um, both languages at once. And, it, and that was pretty cool, too. So, um, so that's a, a dinner church. Here's another cool one. Uh, if you Google moshing with Methodists. Uh, you can read about this one. Uh, it's a, a United Methodist pastor uh, named Francisco, who, when he started at his first appointment, um, he was really passionate about uh, um, punk rock music um, and um, hardcore punk, um, I guess is what you call it. Uh, it's kind of like heavy metal, that kind of genre. Um, but so when he was uh, growing up, he, he experienced this, and he was in high school, he experienced this really awful tragedy and um, lost a member of his family. And out of that, he um, just like looking for healing and found, found some healing in his church and in his faith, but also found healing in punk rock shows and, and hardcore punk shows um, where there's this kind of like communal expression of, of emotion. And, 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 and so this was an important part of, of, of his personal life of, of holding both his faith and hardcore punk together. And so he sought to, to see if he could um, live into both of those in his first appointment as a pastor. And so uh, when he moved um, to, to his church in, uh, um, I think it was Santa Clara, uh, uh, something like that in California, 
he um, found out there's a thriving punk uh, community there, but that there wasn't a safe venue. Um, there was a lot of kind of smaller unsafe venues where these shows were happening. And so he asked his church if they'd be willing to help um, rent a space out and make it into a, a venue. And the church said, yeah. Um, and so uh, on Saturday nights, they had uh, scenes like this um, at, at, uh, at their, church, their church venue. Um, and then on Sunday mornings, they had handbells. So I just love the, the, the juxtaposition of hardcore punk and, and handbells. Uh, it's just a, pic, a perfect picture of that, that blended ecology I was talking about. Um, if, if you can see way up front here uh, is uh, Angelica uh, Regalado Cieza. She is um, a Moravian minister in Winston-Salem. Um, and she's one of my friends and she uh, started a fresh expression. Well, yeah, she started a, a faith community of a fresh expression um, with immigrants in Winston-Salem. And uh, it is based around kind of education. So they do ESL classes, they do SSL uh, classes for um, folks from Latin America who speak dialects and, and don't speak Spanish very well. Um, they uh, do computer classes. This is a, a computer class uh, graduation for um, Hispanic uh, mothers that they've connected with. Um, so they do computer classes. They got tablets donated um, for each of the participants. Um, but they also have faith community. So they have a Monday night Bible study. Um, each of their gatherings begins with a short devotion um, that Angelica leads. Um, and she's built this really cool faith community around that. Um, and uh, this one is a, a memory cafe out of Trinity United Methodist in Gastonia. And this is a, a gathering um, for folks with Alzheimer's and dementia and their caretakers to come to. Um, so it's a, a social gathering um, where that's safe and um, designed for folks uh, who are experiencing Alzheimer's and dementia. And, and people can, um, can uh, come to that and experience, they, they'll do games and trivia and sing songs and uh, share a meal together. And out of that, they're hoping to start a worship service geared towards those families too. Um, so I, I mentioned a few of these, but within Fresh Expressions, and, and this is my, my last slide before we can uh, ask questions and talk, I've seen some good questions in the chat box. Um, but so out of the wider kind of Fresh Expressions model, um, there are some replicable ones. So, so some forms of Fresh Expression that are um, a little bit easier to copy and paste. Uh, you still have to contextualize them to your community, to, um, to the people that you're connecting with, but there are some more kind of replicable models. So dinner church is one. And dinner church is just simply a church that gathers around a meal. Um, so they all look a little different. Um, some dinner churches um, will uh, incorporate communion into it. And it'll, some of them are smaller that meet in a home or meet in a restaurant. Some of them are larger that meet in a fellowship hall of a church or a, a larger community space, like a, a volunteer fire department sometimes have uh, rooms for rent, stuff like that in rural areas. Um, but it's a, a, a shared meal and then elements of church. So there might be a short message um, that's geared towards folks that, um, that are not connected to church. So like usually around Jesus stories. Um, there might be communal praying, so taking prayer requests, praying together. Um, sometimes instead of a message, they'll do like table conversations um, where there's like questions that you talk about as a table. Lots of different ways um, to do dinner church. Um, another um, really common one is pub theology, um, which are gatherings at pubs. There's also beer and hymns. Um, uh, just any kind of gathering that, that meets in a, a place like that really takes a big kind of uh, edge off of folks that have a stigma around church. Um, leading King Street Church, which met at Boone Saloon, I, I had so many conversations with people that were like, yeah, I wouldn't go to church, but a church a church that meets in a pub, like I might try that out. Um, so so it, it's a, a really popular way. Pubtheology.com actually has some really cool resources um, too. Um, another one that's, that's uh, really popular in other countries and starting to gain traction in the U.S. is called Messy Church, and it's a uh, fresh expression geared towards, um, it's intergenerational, especially geared towards families with children, and 
uh, you'll come into like either the fellowship hall or a public space again. Um, and there's uh, like three to five craft stations around the room where there's a table leader at each um, and the family goes around it together um, and does these crafts. Um, and there's a theme for the night. And after you do crafts, there's a short message and then you share a meal. And so it might be an Easter theme or it might be uh, forgiveness or anything like that. And there's a lot of these kind of pre-made um, plans uh, that, that you can access. Messy Church USA does trainings around that too. Um, so really, really cool um, gathering that. Yeah, if, if you look at the statistics for Fresh Expressions in the UK, a huge percentage of them are Messy Church. And they're, they're, they're discipling a ton of post-Christian people through that. Um, there's fresh expressions that gather around recovery, fresh expressions that gather around um, outdoor activities like hiking, kayaking, paddle, paddle boarding is another popular one lately. I've seen a lot of, there's running clubs, um, all kinds of different things like this, gamers, um, uh, gathering around social justice issues. Um, one interesting one that I've seen lately is uh, Climate Cafe. So like there's a lot of uh, climate anxiety right now with uh, a lot of the natural disasters that have been occurring. So this is a climate cafe, is just a, a, a place for people to process their feelings about climate change. Um, and, and out of that, you can build new relationships. Um, I think that one would be a really cool one, especially for like Gen Z folks, like climate change is huge in younger generations. Um, single mom groups, there's another one, uh, called Who Let the Dads Out, which is in the UK, where it's dad's uh, play group, where dads bring their kids together and have fun together. Um, so it's all kinds of cool ideas like that. Um, but yeah, so that is my, my, my spiel. Um, what questions uh, emerge for y'all? What, what haven't I covered that you would like to, to know about? You can ask me hard ones. Um, I, I'm not um, scared. You can push back on something, uh, so ask away. So I have a question. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, um, so the biggest question that I have that I've seen is all these things that you're talking about, I've seen churches do them, and when they're coming out of a, a traditional church or a free, or, you know, a standing church, a lot of times it's looked at as a ministry and not like a new worship service. Um, how would you explain that, that it's actually a whole new worship instead of just a ministry extension of the church, because that kind of bleeds into my second question of funding. Um, I wish we could do all these things, but they do have to be funded. And in fact, last night I was talking with some people and they were talking about if they could give to something and know what it's going towards, like a specific money, they would give to that, which I think is pretty common for people my age and younger, like they wouldn't give to a specific cause. But eventually, like somebody has to pay the pastor or somebody has to pay for the materials or the food, those kind of things. So how do you move from a specific mission to a broader sense of tithing for a bigger cause? Or do these churches or expressions not do that and they just stick with mission? Yeah. Um, all right. So part one, um, how do you uh, get folks to see that? that that is more than a ministry. Um, so I think it's, uh, it, you have to live into it first, right? Like, so, um, so you have to have that intention for it to be church with the people you're gathering, right? So, so a ministry, um, uh, like a, a, a soccer league or something that you have at your church, um, that's not a French expression until you intend for it to be, become a faith community. Um, it, it would be a ministry of the church if it just remains a soccer league, and there's nothing wrong with that. Um, but say you do want it to become a worshiping community, or or you found that the people that you've connected with there, like you built relationships with them, and they're still not coming on Sunday mornings, right? Um, I hear that a lot with like like churches with preschools or churches with with Boy Scouts or churches with all kinds of these outreaches where like, hey, we built the relationships and we invite them to come on Sunday mornings, and they don't come. Like, what's up with that? Um, and so. Um, out of those existing ministries, if you if you're experiencing that, then you can say, okay, what would it look like to form a faith community 
with the people from that group, whether it's moving that, that gathering into a faith community or inviting those people to form a faith community with you. Um, there's that intention there. And then I think um, for your church folks um, who are saying, no, that's just a ministry. That's not a faith community. Then you would have to kind of paint that picture of, of like, Hey, there's, there's just this group of people in our community that are, aren't going to come on Sunday mornings, but we have the ability um, to be the church with them in, in this place where they're, they are comfortable gathering in this way that they are comfortable gathering. Um, so kind of painting that, that picture for um, your church folks. Um, and, and, and I, I found empathy being really helpful for that. So like um, we had people that loved King street church. Like I had little old ladies that would give me big hugs and be like, I'm so glad you're doing what you're doing on King street. And I'd be like, really? Like why? <laughs> like we're, you know, we're like drinking beer and talking about scripture. Right. Um, and they would say, it's because I have a grandson that isn't going to church. I know he's not going to come to Boone UMC, but he might go to something like King street church, like keep doing what you're doing. Um, so, so I, I think that empathy can be really helpful too. And then part two about the financing. I think, um, that one, a lot of fresh expressions are lay led and really cheap, you know, like, uh, and, and so, um, sometimes it's not even an issue. Um, but I do think like if the fresh expression is costing money, like I think it definitely is okay to, to begin to ask for support from folks that are coming and you might do it by doing it on a one-on-one -on -one basis with people that, you know, aren't going to respond really poorly as opposed to like passing a plate around the, the table at the pub or something, you know, like, like you might say like, Hey, you, uh, John, you've been coming for three years. Like, you're growing in your Christian faith, would you consider like supporting this faith community in, in, with your finances in some kind of way? Um, you know, so there's, there's kind of creative ways of doing that. Cause, cause yeah, I think you're right. Um, that once a, a community is spending money, it should, it should contribute, um, to itself. So. I'd love to hear more, a little bit more about, the. Uh, about the integrating of discipleship component, um, because as, as a number of the applications that we've gotten, uh, that has been one of the, the weaker mo parts of it. And I, and I feel like that is the reason we are you know, doing these. Um, and the other question I have that we've kind of struggled with is interior, uh, like inside marketing, uh, meaning to our churches and seeking to promote uh, what we call new spaces. We chose new spaces because we're like, no, we, we're just not, the fresh expressions doesn't capture it. We wanted new faces and new spaces. And so we went with that. But then I had some people like, hey, come look at our parlor. We just remodeled. It's our new space. Mm -hmm. um, and I was like, and then a lot of lack in the discipleship. And so now we're like exploring, do we want to rebrand and relaunch as micro churches? Mm -hmm. And so kind of those two, and part of the rebrand of micro churches is because the discipleship component has been uh, not the strongest and maybe it's okay that it's not the strongest. And so I'd, li I'd like to hear kind of more about, hear yeah. a little bit more about that. Yeah, let me uh, share okay. another slide here. Um, this has been really helpful for me in kind of conceptualizing discipleship in a fresh, ah, in a fresh expression. Um, this is uh, from, Everts and Shops uh, Pathway to Jesus. So they interviewed a thousand post-Christian uh, young people from uh, California, Southern California, who had converted to Christianity and the process that they went through um, to become a Christian. And if you see it, it's it's a slow process, right? So um, so it takes building trust with a Christian. Like people outside of the church have a lot of reason to distrust Christians. Um, they've been burned. They've uh, seen some crazy stuff on TV, um, read stuff on the internet about Christians. And they're like, like it takes a while to just build some trust around that. Um, and then there's this period of curiosity where like, whoa, this Jesus guy, he was cool. Like he like was like making church people angry and like people want to kill him. Like what, what's up with this guy? Um, and, and so there's this period of curiosity 
Um, and then a period of kind of personal connection to it, like, okay, like maybe there is something to following Jesus, um, to, to, to being a disciple of Jesus. Um, and then there's that uh, kind of conversion um, uh, process that, that happens, like, okay, like I understand, like, like I want to put my faith in Jesus and to follow Jesus. Um, and so I think that like recognizing that discipleship for post-Christian people is a slow process can help you conceptualize a discipleship. It's, it's almost like, you know, like the discipleship pathways we have in traditional forms of church where it's like um, you kind of map out how discipleship is going to happen when someone comes on Sunday morning, um, how you're going to, build them into deeper discipleship. So it's kind of like that, but thinking about it in a fresh expression. So how are you creating um, conversations where you can stir that curiosity about Jesus? How are you creating like, like those, that social community is a place where people can build trust with Christians, right? You can earn that trust back um, from folks who mistrust Christians. Um, and then, yeah, often discipleship starts with some kind of simple faith conversation around often around Jesus stories or um, a super relatable topic. So like at, at the Boone Saloon, we would just have some kind of uh, topic that would relate to everyone at the table. So it might be, you know, something like forgiveness, or um, it could be something like loneliness, or we could process something that happened in the news the, the week before. Um, the, I remember we had a, a really powerful conversation after um, one of the police uh, shootings that happened and, and we, we were able to process that and connect it to scripture and uh, we had conversations um, just really relatable conversations where we incorporated a, a piece of scripture into it um, and as we shared around the table the people that were Christian were able to share a perspective um, based in the Christian faith right like I would even like share stuff like, cause I, they knew I was a Methodist minister. I would, I would share like quotes from the book of discipline sometimes. So like, and these were people that like were not church people, but, but it was a safe place for everybody to share their own perspective. And so the Christian perspective was safe to share too. Right. Cause, cause we weren't saying like, this is what you have to believe. This is what we believe as a group. Like it was, no, it was like, it was, Hey, here's how I view this. How do you view it? And then we have this conversation uh, and out of that, out of those conversations, we had this woman, uh, one, one, of, one of the women who, who came to faith out of King Street Church this is kind of similar to that, that pathway that I, I uh, put up, but she um, was spiritual, but not religious um, when we met her. She uh, s told me that she would pray, like she would go on these hikes and like talk to a God, but she didn't really know what. God she was praying to or God she was talking to. Um, and she came to King Street Church when one of her friends invited her and she liked it. She kept coming back every week. She was super committed. And after maybe like six months, eight months, she said, hey, I think the God that I've been praying to is the God that um, that we're reading about when we uh, talk, talk, have these scripture conversations. I was like, well, that's cool. And she said, but I don't see why I need Jesus. Like, I think Jesus is really cool. I want to emulate Jesus, but I don't think I need him to kind of get to, to God. I, I, I don't get that. And I was like, okay, cool. Like, maybe maybe it'll make sense at some point. Maybe not, but just keep coming. Like, we'll, we'll talk about it more. Um, and uh, a year after that, she was reading the Passion Story in John uh, during Holy Week. And she said that the shame of, of Christ, um, of, of being uh, beaten, of being hung on the cross, like it just like hit her like a ton of bricks. And all of a sudden she realized why she needed Jesus. Um, and, and I said, well, you know, you're a Christian now, right? And she was like, heck no. <laughs> um, but, but yeah, so she had gone, gone through that process. It took like a year and a half, two years um, to, to move from, the, the beginning of that process to conversion um, and is still, you know, still wrestling with stuff. So I think that's, I guess, my best stab at creating a picture of what discipleship looks like. Thanks. That was helpful. 
Um, someone asked in the chat box early, Anthony asked how long does this process take? Um, so it take it just depends. Um, I think the fresh expressions that I've seen that end up really connecting with people uh, outside of the church take their time in those early stages. So it's like months, um, perhaps even a year of, of building relationships, some of them longer. Um, and, and when you move too quickly um, and, and move towards a faith community too quickly, often you'll get folks that are already connected to a church. Um, so I have that conversation a lot where someone's like, hey, we started this cool, fresh expression, but the only people coming are church people. Um, why aren't unchurched people coming? And when we talk about it, it ends up being they didn't spend enough time in the first couple of stages. Um, there's a question from Tom about a, um, a deaf, fresh expression. Um, so what's your advice on how to approach an existing interest group? Um, Tom, do you have any kind of existing relationships with the local deaf community? Yes, uh, yeah, thank you. Uh, I, I think you, you answered some of my question as you were uh, talking. I uh, might have jumped the, the gun a little bit there, but uh, yes, I, I have a, uh, I've had a long uh, association with the deaf community in Dallas. Uh, we've, uh, we've had uh, uh, something called Deaf Saturday Night Live, where we've had a worship uh, that shared, rotated among deaf ministries in the Dallas-Fort Worth area uh, about three or four times a year and we're taking turns hosting uh, a meal and a worship and uh, fellowship time, that sort of thing. But uh, the challenge that I've had is uh, uh, trying to start or, or, or build a, or grow the community. And uh, I feel like I keep uh, hitting, against, hitting against a, uh, uh, a, a, a line of resistance mm -hmm. and uh, it, it, trying to find some ways to connect. Uh, recently, I've been reaching out to a, a, a deaf couple who have uh, two deaf, uh, two hearing children and uh, sent them an invitation to Christmas, sent them an invitation to Easter, sent them an invitation to vacation Bible school. And uh, it's kind of like, yeah, but then they don't show. And uh, I just recently uh, said to the, to the, to the mother that uh, I just feel like we, uh, we want to serve you. I mean, that, that our, our, our deaf ministry like to serve your family. And, and that just changed the kind of perspective of, of, well, just forget about trying to make them come, but uh try to meet where their needs are. So it, it, it's one of those things I'm just being very patient about. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think that kind of, uh, 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 of resistance or standoffishness is, is replicated in, in other deaf families. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, I think if you, um, you know, talked to those connections that you already have and, and, ask them like, what, what would be something that would be helpful for y'all or, or what would be something that you guys would, would come to that we could help host or, um, and, um, and build kind of community around that and, and just see if some of those conversations about faith come up. Um, but yeah, I, or the, the hiking group, Hey, I, I saw this, this really cool, um, hiking group, um, would, uh, would, would y'all want to start one of these or, or something like that? So, um, but I'm, I'm happy to chat more too about that um, and help you process that. I can put my email address in the chat box. Uh, Matt, I know that we were aiming for 8.15, so I want to make sure that I turn it back over to you. Yeah, awesome. I, I appreciate it. And um, yeah, I think it's, it's so inspiring just hearing um, the different stories and, and seeing the different ways that this has uh, happened and, and how it's in a lot of ways like it's not rocket scientist it's like go be present in the community love people build relationships and um, you know if, if uh, 
if you do that, you're, you're going to find yourself having opportunities to share the gospel. Um, maybe in creative, non-traditional ways, but we got to get out of that mindset of like, <clears throat> we talk a lot in our cohort about uh, developing a theology of guesting instead of hosting. And I think that's, you know, that's kind of the key there is um, it's okay to go be the guest, to listen and build those relationships. So yeah, thank you so much. Um, really appreciate your time and uh, investment in the North Texas Conference. And um, I think with that, I will close us in a, in a quick prayer. All right. <clears throat> um, Jesus, I just thank you for uh, this chance for us to connect on a Thursday night over Zoom from all different places in the country, really. And uh, grateful for technology, even though we're, we've been living through such trying times. And I just ask um, that those who've been here, God, would be inspired. And that those who've been here um, and who have had a chance to, to listen would uh, feel just a sense of hope that, um, God, you're calling every one of us to make an impact in our community. So fill us with faith and hope and courage uh, to do this work and just creative ideas to get out and, and listen to our neighborhood and our communities and um, find ways to bring, um, just the, to bear witness to the gospel um, in the midst of the people you've called us to. In, in Jesus' name we pray, um, amen. One other quick thing before you get off, uh, we are going to, uh, as Luke mentioned, his book comes out in September, and so probably starting in October, we are going to uh, make available to the whole conference, if you all wanna be in a cohort that reads through book, Luke's book together, uh, we'll get some copies of the book and um, have have that opportunity to just sort of over, probably like over a 16-week period, we'll meet every other week and just talk about sort of people's ideas, what they're wanting to start, how to do it, and, and kind of process the book together. So if you want to do that in the chat there, Jessica has put a form, um, a Google form, and you can register now and then we'll have your information so that when we get ready to start that cohort, we can uh, reach out to you all and uh, get that set up. So. If you're wanting to do that, um, it'll I'll, I'll probably be the one leading um, leading us through the the book, and uh, more than anything, really, just what we want to do is create a community of folks who are trying new things that just want to be in community together, talk about what's working, what's not working, share ideas, and uh, collaborate on um, different ideas, and uh, go through the book while we do it. So. If you're interested in that, uh, feel free to go to that form, and that'll also be on our web on our website eventually, and in social media, so you'll see it out there too. So, anyways, uh, Luke, thank you so much. I appreciate you, my friend. Oh yeah, it was, it was great to be with y'all. Hope to get to see y'all again. Maybe I can pop in on your book group one time. Yeah, yeah for sure. Thanks, thanks, Luke. Thanks, man. I also want to put in a plug. On September 9th at 9:30 a.m., we're going to have a Zoom about doing income generating uh, ministries. And so go ahead and put that on your calendar and we'll be looking for that information. Hey, Dr. So. Ross, one other thing is that this Saturday, uh, oh, from, yeah. nine, from nine to noon, we're having a laity event. Has the church left the building? Now what? It might be, might be good for, for some of y'all to attend that as well. It'll be a perfect dessert to the, to the scrumptious meal that we just had this evening. Yes, sir. Uh, yeah, Jason Moore will be here, and he's going to be really talking about equipping your laity uh, to engage people in this new season of online ministry and in, 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 in small groups like, like we're talking about here. So that would be another great opportunity. Thanks, Don. You're very welcome. Good, good. Thanks All for right. having me.